Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Chat with the Chief. As always, I'm your Chief Jared Mills, and today we're going to talk about the condition of our current facility. Uh, as you can see, this is the entrance to the police department. Uh, we have some deficiencies that I want to point out, uh, one of them being the steps as you enter uh, right now. They're in disrepair, if you will. They have some areas where if you walk in, uh, they're a trip hazard. So we've actually had to shut that off uh, so you can't enter the police department from the front steps. We actually have to use the handicap accessible ramp, if you will, to get in, which still works, but um, obviously this is an issue that we're contending with. So follow me and we're gonna talk about uh, some other areas in the police department. Okay, now we're inside of the police department. When you walk in, this is the area that you'll first see. This is called our vestibule. Um, it does separate the lobby from the entrance, however, you only have one place that you can go. That's been an issue for us that's problematic if you'll follow along with me into the lobby itself because as you can see when you come in to make a criminal complaint or uh, if you're here for any other reason, whatever that may be, a sex offender registry, a tour, uh, that type of thing, everybody has to co-mingle in this area. Um, it's worked for us for several years, but when you really get down to the operation part of the PD, it's important that there be multiple areas within. When you walk into a vestibule, you'd be able to go either one way or the other, depending on what type of service you're providing. Our biggest concern, as you can, as you can imagine, is uh, as we bring folks in, whether it be for crimes or sex offender registries, that they're not commingling uh, with the Boy Scout group or folks that are here to actually have a, uh, a legitimate police business uh, or a, a positive tour, if you will, uh, throughout the building. So uh, next we'll move in to the inside of the uh, facility. Okay, now we're the, in the inside of the internal part of the facility itself. We've walked in from the lobby. Now you come in, uh, whatever business that you have with the police department. As I said, we do a multiple multitude of things. We take fingerprints of folks, uh, whether it be criminal or if you're a school teacher that needs their fingerprints taken for a job, uh, you'll actually come down here too. So uh, this is an issue we have to contend with because we're actually in what really should be a secure part of the facility, but it's not because now that you're in here, you have full access to the building. In a new facility, you would see that uh, it would be partitioned off where you could get in some places and not others. There'd be doors that were locked and that type of thing. But for now, it's inefficient for us because anytime somebody comes past these walls, if you will, or past this door, they have to be accompanied by somebody if they're not an employee or a sworn law enforcement officer. So um, we're gonna walk through here and I'm gonna show okay, you some So now we've snapped around the corner and we're actually walking into our patrol wing, if you will. Uh, this has all the briefing rooms of the officers where they do their reports. There's a lieutenant's office over here. Um, as we move forward, there's another equipment room to our right and then uh, we also have um, on this side the sergeant's office and the animal control office so again problematic for us when it comes to uh, security and safety you can't just walk through here or have somebody who's not uh, an employee here walking through usually again it's people being fingerprinted uh, people who have to do registrations and that type of thing they actually have to walk through so we could be having a secure briefing uh, talking about police matters and we're actually having to walk people through telling everybody else to kind of keep the noise down and that type of thing. In a newer facility or the an efficient layout, the design wouldn't be like this. So um, we're going to move into the sally port now and I want to so show you So here in our sally port, it's always worked good for us for years. We really haven't known what we don't know, if you will. But uh, really, some of the issues that now we find in a newer facility, uh, you would never set up a sally port like this. You wouldn't drive in and then have to back out. Um, if you walk this way, what you'll see is the entrance door to the rest of the police department. So if you could imagine this basic setup of the sally port would actually be uh, turned, if you will, so you could drive in and drive out. Uh, it's not really efficient. We can fit a couple vehicles in here, but obviously if one's parked behind the other, Somebody has to come down, move that vehicle and that type of thing. Drainage is another issue as well on the floor, as you can see when we bring vehicles in in the wintertime, uh, when snow's dripping off them and thawing out, 
we do have some drainage issues that uh, the water will actually go right into our booking rooms over there. And, that and finally, thing, what I'd so. like to point out is the temporary evidence storage locker that we have here when people are under arrest or any property that needs to be or evidence that needs to be temporarily seized. Um, obviously, this is within compliance of our policies and procedures, but it's maybe not the most efficient way. Under a new facility, a new design, an efficient design, you would actually have the uh, permanent evidence room, which we'll get to in a, in a little bit, uh, in this particular area. So there would be one-stop shopping, if you will. The evidence would be placed in this particular locker, um, and it wouldn't have to be handled again until the next person either released it or secured it um, uh, within the uh, evidence, full-time evidence storage room. Uh, let's move on to another portion down the hallway of the police department. Okay, so now we walked along the hallway. We've taken a left and then a right several feet down the hallway here is where the temporary storage lockers are. If that was centrally located in a, an efficient building, the officers would be able to just place the evidence in this particular uh, holding pattern, if you will, or holding facility. And then the evidence officer on the other side of the wall would then handle that accordingly. So a little bit inefficient, the way we're set up in compliance with policy, it works for us, uh, but certainly not the best way to do things. So um, moving forward, that's what we would and, like to see. And here we've slid down the hallway into our gym uh, slash archives records uh, slash uh, holding, uh, you know, facility for uh, different uh, water bottles and fi files and folders and that type of thing. And then on the back side here, another uh, holding facility, if you will, for miscellaneous equipment that we have. Um, this is one of those things where, uh, as I should have said in the beginning, this was a building that was built uh, in 1949 for a Naval Reserve building, if you will. It was never intended to be a police department. So this is a typical example of a room that was a large space for us. It was their drill hall at one time that we actually occupied. Uh, it wasn't a space big enough for anything we needed at the time. So we made several different spaces out of it. Not the best use of this location. It's almost too big is where I'm going with that. We actually almost have too much space. A gym doesn't need to be as big as this and certainly have an archives and a couple storage rooms within that. So in a more efficient facility, a more efficient design, you wouldn't have it laid out like this. There'd be a small gym that would be separate from the archives uh, and storage So as facilities. we're walking up to the second floor, I'd like to point out our water situation. Uh, as I haven't pointed out so far, but many already know, we can't drink the water in this facility. It is not uh, at an appropriate healthy level to actually consume. So we have to have bottled water pulled in uh, weekly for us, for the officers and visitors to be able to drink water in this facility. And this is an example of our holding place where these are all empty bottles, but you'll see as we walk around, there are several locations that have bottled water facilities. And then we're gonna move upstairs. So moving upstairs to the second floor, as you can see uh, in this stairwell, it's kind of our back stairwell. Uh, we have some deficiencies in the roof at the top. We've had one of our biggest problems is the fact that we have uh, a leaking roof that needs to be replaced. That kind of started this whole situation of looking into a new police station because when we looked at replacing the roof, that's obviously gonna trigger some codes that we need in order to uh, comply with state and federal laws. And in order to do that, we found out quickly that in order to put a new roof, the amount of money that we would spend would trigger what they call a category four building. And the easiest way to explain that is a category four building is a building that needs to be the last one standing during any natural disaster. So everything would have to be reinforced. We would actually have to probably just dis be displaced for more than 18 months to bring this entire building into compliance with a category four after replacing the roof. So that's obviously an issue that uh, we, we've had professionals come in and look at what that cost would be, but you really can't know the full cost of that based upon how long we would be displaced or if there's even a facility in the city of Augusta that could house the police department temporarily while we had uh, the renovations being done. So from here, we've walked into our investigative wing 
And this is a typical example of one of our detective offices that we have on the second floor. Obviously, I've already indicated the deficiencies with the roof. Um, and this is what we're left with. There's really no point in replacing this roof with sheetrock or the internal part of this roof with sheetrock uh, in fear that uh, it will just simply leak again. Now, that's not to say that we aren't taken care of. When they leak, we have a contract with a contractor. They come right out and they can actually stop the leaking. But this is certainly something we need to contend with. And again, goes back to having to replace the roof and what cost that would be for the displacement and finding it. within the uh, department, if you will, on the second floor. Uh, this is a conference room that we have, and as you can see, uh, we do have some issues. Again, uh, a lot of this goes back to the roof, but uh, really and truly, uh, during certain times of the year, this is an issue that we have to contend with. Uh, some of the floors as we go through as well uh, would be another part that would have to uh, be leveled, if you will. Uh, there's some, some certain deficiencies in, in the flooring and uh, some warped areas and that type of thing, along with finally the heating system as well. Uh, heating and cooling in the building is, uh, I guess I would say is aged is the best way to say that. So in need of, of an upgrade as well, which would all go into uh, the uh, cost of upgrading this building as well. So. Uh, obviously an issue that we have to We're moving with. into our CID administrative assistant office, Sue Bonson. Many know Sue, a uh, lifetime Augusta resident who, who's worked for the city for 38 years. She worked in the old facility. She's worked in this facility that was always meant to really be temporary, right, Sue, when we yes, were moving in. It was never meant for us to stay here no. uh, for the 20 some odd years we were here. Uh, in your words, you've been here the entire time. Uh, what are some of the issues you see with this building? Well, unfortunately, we went from worse to not so bad. Um, we have serious heating issues. Right now, my registered heat 68. That's with the heater that is running 24-7 at 70. It's a nice in here today because there's no wind blowing off the park because the temperature will drop into the 50s with this cranked at 75. They have put plastic on the windows to stop the draft because during the Northeaster papers would actually fly off my desk. If you look at the ceiling, we have plenty of leaks and we run around with buckets. This light here was turned off by the electricians. The power was killed because the water was coming in they were fear of fire. Under these here, there was a black mold that they said was not black mold. However, they removed it after um, I was gone for the day and there's no running water, the floors are crooked, the heat is uncontrollable, some areas of the building it's extremely hot while I'm up here freezing. In the summer other people are extremely hot. I'm sitting here with a fleece blanket on me which I have in my drawer right here. Happens to be a British Airways blanket. <laughs> so, so you come prepared to work come prepared. every day. And I have a thicker blanket in the other room. And I also have a plethora of jackets, vests, and sweaters behind that door. Because I never know what I'm going to need to wear. Awesome. Great information from somebody who works here every day. Um, and you can see what she has to contend with as well. So let's move on down the hallway. Thanks for chatting with us, Sue. Now we've moved down Thank the hallway you. a little bit to another area within the police department. This is, uh, again, the size of the department is a, uh, a positive, I guess, but a, a negative as well, because this is obviously a space um, that is in disrepair. We don't actually need it right now. Uh, we could use it for an extra office, but we've actually decided to double the school resource officer office uh, with a community resource officer as well as um, our intern office. But this would make a good space for one of those, uh, but certainly with all of the issues that were here um, and the cost that it would take to rehab this office or this space, if you will, which is a great space, um, but it, would be, uh, it wouldn't be really worth putting the money into it until we decide where we're gonna go. So this is another example of the original floors that were here uh, and, and what this building was intended for. And it really wasn't, again, for the efficiency of a uh, Now we've moved down to the hallway to the actual men's locker room. Uh, this is where there's a bathroom and the lockers are held for the officers when they come to work to be able to don and doff, change uh, 
into their equipment, if you will. And this is an example of our bathroom that we have. Uh, Non-ADA compliant, as you can see, right now is uh, one of the things we looked into was upgrading this a few years ago. And we found quickly that uh, obviously it's a need as you snap around the corner here, um, you're gonna see the uh, particular areas as far as the flooring being dated in need of uh, repair and obviously the uh, showers, if you will. I can uh, peel back one of the, the curtains over here as far as uh, the shower setup. Obviously these are tired. This is not anything that a custodian can clean and make new. This whole locker room slash bathroom, if you will, needs to be replaced. And in order to do that, that triggers a lot of uh, codes again. And just to work on this particular space to make it a, a nice place for the officers to change and shower and, and use the facilities would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars because of that ADA compliant um, and other things. It's not just a matter of putting a new sink in. There's a lot of new standards and codes that have to be upgraded from where uh, we were. So. Um, this is an example of this bathroom. We'll uh, head over to another bathroom that uh, suffers the same deficiencies. And this is another example of a bathroom that we have on the second floor. Uh, can be Again, used by either male or female. Suffers uh, some of the same deficiencies as our others. I don't know if the video will show the floor, but there's a severe slope uh, in this area here that uh, we have to contend with, as well as uh, the bathrooms. This is a more of a ADA compliant bathroom, the larger size, if you will, but certainly the floors would have to be ripped up, leveled, um, and everything updated. These are examples of some showers that obviously we don't use. Uh, they're in severe uh, bad conditions, if you will. So again, this is just a tired facility that needs some major upgrades. And in order to do that, um, we have a uh, lot to continue. Okay, now with. we've so, moved into the clerk's office and the entrance to dispatch, which is another issue we're gonna to have to contend with as we move forward. Right now we have three dispatch terminals in this particular room where there's no other space for any growth. Uh, obviously we're gonna need the that. Calls the calls aren't going on, it's actually the, the calls are going up. So there's gonna be a need for more dispatchers, if you will, and not less. So we'll eventually need a room that can have more than three terminals in it. So that's another issue that we're contending with. Behind me is what the public right sees now. when they drive in. This is the entrance to the police department. Obviously we're uh, occupying the left side of the building and this is where the police vehicles drive in. In again, and that's a deficiency of ours, in a more efficient, newer style police station, this would all be secured. It would be fenced in uh, parking for the uh, officers and employees and that type of thing. So that's that's obviously something that uh, we need to contend with. It needs an upgrade um, and something that uh, obviously with a new facility that would be designed. So in closing, I wanna thank everybody for coming along with this tour. Uh, hopefully we were able to show you a lot of the areas or all of the areas of issues that we're having within the police department. We always, uh, uh, ask everybody uh, if they ever have any questions or want to give us a call or come see anything uh, you're more than welcome to we love to show off our facility we do a lot of tours for our other different things as well so any specific questions you want to ask uh, my number is 626-2370 extension 3410 I'd be more than happy to answer anything that you would have and uh, again just to reiterate you know this is a facility that was something we moved into 21 years ago. It was supposed to be temporary at the time. Uh, 21 years later, we're still here. Um, and it's not by anybody else's fault. It's just a tired facility that was never meant to be a police station, as you can see from all the areas we showed you. In order to fix this to a place where it would need to be, um, you're talking uh, a significant amount of money that uh, has already been studied and there's reports out there on that as far as that would look. And then again, we would have to contend with being displaced for 18 months or more as a police station. Another area Where are we going to go in the uh, city that uh, will take us, and we don't even know anything that exists. So, again, I thank everybody for coming along on this tour, and uh, please come see us or ask us if you have any questions. Have a great day.